Hey guys, I want to welcome you back to week 13 of my weight loss journey. I woke up this morning and I just realized something. That I am almost 10 pounds away from losing 100 pounds. That's huge. Let's do this. And please be sure to comment down below. Let me know what your weight loss journey is. Are you struggling with something and just want to talk about it? Because I just want to help people and I love this community. I love talking to people and I love conversing back and forth in the comment section. So... You know, please drop me a comment down below and hopefully we can start a discussion. So we're going to jump right on into this video. So every morning when I get up, I do the same basic routine on a Saturday morning. Is I, I just get up and I break the scale out. And I jump on the scale and see what my weight is for the entire week. Now, it looks like this week we're going to be sitting right around 345.1. That's a big deal to me. Now the overall weight loss, uh, let's see, 345.1 minus 435, that's 89.9 pounds. 89.9 pounds in 13 weeks. Can you believe that? I, I can't hardly believe that. Now my overall weight loss from last week, uh, let's see, 345.1 minus 345.7, that only puts me down around 0.6 pounds. But that's okay, because here's the important part. I've been losing inches. Since I started this weight loss goal, I was epically huge at 435 pounds, almost stuck in bed. And when I started, I mean, I was on this first notch right here, on this belt right here. And now I only have two more notches to go. This is this is where I'm at now. I mean, that's a, that's a lot of belt right there. And pretty soon I'm either gonna have to add an extra hole to this belt, or I'm just gonna need to get a smaller belt because there's gonna be a lot of this hanging out the side pretty soon. So now I know this week's weight loss wasn't really that dramatic, and it really wasn't dramatic for a reason. And it wasn't necessarily on purpose, because throughout the week, uh, let's see, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, I was sampling a bunch of different food items to see how it would make me feel. And the main thing I was looking for is foods that would create chronic inflammation. Now, chronic inflammation is something that's always been a problem with me, and I've been finding out that things like seed oils, for instance, create chronic inflammation. Wheats and grains, chronic inflammation. And if you're tired of hearing me talk about chronic inflammation, I can always talk about something else. But the two main products that I've been working with were pizza, because pizza's my thing. I'm a glutton for pizza. So if I'm a glutton for pizza, then I want to find the healthiest pizza option that I can have and still lose weight in the process. Because man, I love pizza. And as we all know that hmm, bad pizza is still pretty good pizza. So the wife took a trip to Costco and in her trip, she found two different styles of, you know, for kind of friendly pizzas that were, you know, low in calorie. Unfortunately, I don't have the boxes because she uses the boxes to throw the pizza on top and then slice up everything. But one thing I do know is that the cauliflower pizza, for instance, which is one that I absolutely love and it works really well with everything that's going on in my body right now. And it doesn't throw me out of ketosis and or autophagy for that matter. And each slice, which is the size of about two slices, so it's a pretty big slice. I mean, it's like a quarter size wedge of a full size pizza. Each one of those slices is 360 calories. So I could eat a whole lot of pizza. I could actually eat the whole pizza, just that pizza in one day and still be in a calorie deficit for the entire day. Now the other pizza she bought was a, a gluten-free style pizza and it's supposed to be kind of keto friendly, but you know, I have tried several gluten-free options. I've tried keto friendly bread. I've tried keto friendly pizza dough from other places like Papa John's for instance, they have a keto friendly pizza dough. Now this keto friendly pizza dough or gluten-free for that matter, it just tastes rubbery and weird. The kids love it. so. It's an okay option for the children, but it doesn't work well for me. The wife bites into it and she doesn't particularly care for it. It's kind of like a, I don't, I don't know how to explain it. I mean, you might as well be using eggplant as the base of your pizza. Blah, 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 blah. So in the process of doing that, I haven't really been losing any weight. I've been just kind of maintaining and losing inches. Inches is incredibly important to this weight loss. I mean, even if I'm not losing weight, I'm okay as long as I'm maintaining the weight that I have. I just don't want to go in the other direction because gaining weight isn't exactly what I'm here to do. I want to lose weight. At some point, I'm going to have a bad weight and the weight might go up a couple pounds, but that's still not a deal breaker. I know what to do and I know how to keep the calories down and I also know how to stay in a calorie deficit and implement another fast if I think I need to be fasting. Now, Thursday and Friday of this week were the only two days of the week that I actually did a deliberate fast. 
because like I said, I was actually, you know, sampling different products, breads and stuff like that to see, okay, how's this stuff going to make me feel? And you, you don't eat a whole bunch of everything to see how it makes you feel because a whole bunch of something is typically going to make you feel like horrible, just horrible. Just don't do it. So the other foods I was sampling was just a little bit, like I would eat a potato chip or something like that, you know, maybe a tater tot or a french fry, and I'd, I'd see how I felt hours later. Now, three or four hours later after eating each one of those items, I felt incredibly bogged down. I just didn't feel right in the stomach. It didn't make me feel healthy. I didn't like that feeling of not feeling healthy because now that I've pretty much eliminated most items out of my daily intake, it's just been incredibly easy to just stay away from stuff like that and just sampling an item here or there uh, is quite beneficial because you know when you recognize the signs of poison in the society you know stuff that we're trying to intake every day if that makes sense that it just it's just not a good idea because it's just making us feel like garbage so why would we continue feeling like garbage every day but anyhow on another note as most of you know, if you've been following along, I started out this weight loss journey doing auto parts, which was a pretty active job. I was getting in and out of the vehicles, I was stocking the shelves, I was, I was doing stuff, I was moving around. So I was burning anywhere uh, from 1,200 calories to approximately 2,500 calories a day. And staying in a calorie deficit at that time was really beneficial. And since then, I departed my job at the auto parts place and I went back to a dump truck driving job, which pays pretty well here in Alaska and it's kind of a specialized type of thing so we do extremely well you know for the entire season but the thing that had me a little bit concerned was is my weight kind of plateaued it did drop a little bit at first while I was driving a dump truck and I was kind of wondering why okay what am I doing differently I'm still fasting I'm still watching my calorie intake but what is the main difference well, the main difference is I'm, I'm sitting a lot more. I'm not getting in and out of the truck and I'm not moving around. So I had to do some digging around and find out some math. So what I found out is a typical person can burn up to 150 to 200 calories per hour behind the wheel of a car and possibly a little more driving a commercial vehicle just because it just, it just takes a little more effort and getting in and out of the vehicle actually takes some strength. So definitely keep this in mind if that's your lifestyle because eating breakfast, lunch, and dinner and snacks on top of that can potentially ruin you as a person. According to Business Insider, uh, the average American eats around 3,600 calories per day. No wonder we have a morbid population. It's crazy just how big our population here is in the United States. The Europeans and all of them overseas, they all look at us and they're laughing. They come over here and they, they, they do visits quite often. I meet them here around town, tourists. and they feel sick after eating a American diet and then they go back home and they start eating healthy again. So if we take the amount of meals with the uh, calories that I mentioned, 3,600 calories per day, if we take that and we divide it by three, it comes out to 1,200 calories per meal. Now, many of us, like me prior, was eating at least that, sometimes more per meal. So some of us were getting like 4,500 calories to 6,000 calories per day. And a lot of those calories came from empty things like drinks, coffee, sodas, morning shakes, and fraps. Now, another way we accomplish these wonderful numbers is we're eating overly processed foods. We're shopping the center aisles of the store. We're not paying attention to ingredients. We're not paying any attention to things that create inflammation or stuff like high fructose corn syrup, which just naturally shuts off our entire weight loss benefit of any given day of the week. And I don't care if you're doing massive cardio, it's still hampering whatever you're trying to do. Now, fast food and sugary everything has made us one of the fattest countries in the entire world, in my opinion. That's a problem. We need to start doing something a little differently around here. So here's how I'm losing weight driving a dump truck, or at least losing inches. I start off every single day with a black cup of coffee. No sugar, no creamer. And if I were to add creamer, I would make sure it's like a whole cream and not that weird stuff. No, it's not even there today. Usually it's over there. I'll go get it. Not these items right here. These things are poison if you don't know that. And I'm not going to stop other people from drinking this stuff or even tell them not to. But this stuff right here will basically stop your weight loss for the day. And a lot of people add a lot of this stuff directly into their coffee. I was one of those people. And then to top it off, I would add a bunch of sugar on top of that. I mean, 
wow, that's just stopping progress from happening. Now, after drinking my black coffee, I would always take electrolytes. Now, I would make my own electrolytes at home using a process of about a tablespoon to two of apple cider vinegar, about another tablespoon or two of lemon juice. I don't measure everything exactly in the morning. And then I would always add three pinches of Himalayan pink salt. And the reason for the Himalayan pink salt is because it's high in minerals and nutrients. Now, another option is Celtic sea salt. I have yet to source out any of that here in the state of Alaska, but I am definitely on a mission to find some. The next step is to just fill the glass with water and you give it a good stir and you use that while taking your morning vitamins or supplements or however you're doing your routine every day. And then for lunch, my favorite thing is three hard boiled eggs. That's all I take for snacks and lunch when I'm driving a big truck. Because if you are a truck driver or you know a truck driver, quite often you know they got a big box of Cheez-Its sitting in between the seats. They're just reaching down as they're driving down the road. Or they got a big bag of potato chips. Again, reaching down and I don't know why I got fat. I'm not doing anything different. Yeah, come on. We know why we're getting fat. Excuses, that was my number one problem. Stop making excuses. We can't blame everything on the truck stops or the quickie marts or the supermarket for that matter. We're the ones that make the decision to pick up certain items. And if we don't know what's in the products and we're uneducated, whose fault is that? Is that the fault of the EPA? Is that the fault of the FDA? Is that the fault of our big government or corporations? Absolutely not. That's totally our fault. You know, we're the ones that are buying things with lots of words on the packages and we're just consuming them blindlessly thinking they're okay to eat. You see, we have this wonderful thing called Google and you can find out what every single word on an ingredient list is. You can even find out how dangerous Red 40 and yellow and other artificial flavorings and colorings are. Now, when something says natural flavoring, that's not necessarily natural. It's overly processed and potentially poison. So just read your labels and do yourself a favor and try to do a little bit better the next time you go out on a shopping trip because we all need to do a little bit better in order for this to work. And the next step after I eat my lunch is I end up getting home. I'm not eating snacks while I'm out driving. So when I get home, I make sure to eat a diet consisting of mainly protein, some vegetables, some fish, like salmon, fresh caught salmon. I try to maintain my calorie intake towards the end of the day around 800 to 1000 calories. So when I'm driving my truck, I'm burning approximately 250 calories per hour. Now if we multiply that times 10, that's 2500 calories just sitting on my butt driving around in circles driving a dump truck. And if I come home and I only eat about 600 to 1000 calories, that puts me in a pretty decent calorie deficit. Now, the secret is, is I focus mainly on proteins and a plant-based diet and always vitamins, electrolytes. So far at this point, I haven't been doing a whole lot of exercising. You know, I get up, I walk to the car, get in the car, go to work, walk to the truck, get in the truck. Sometimes I get out of the truck, but I'm not doing anything strenuous throughout my day. So this next week, I do have an exercise plan kind of in place. It's going to fall in line a little bit with the 30 idea. So it's going to be 30 of this, 30 of that, and we'll have to see. If you like these videos and you're interested in following along, please subscribe to the channel because it really helps us out. And all I want to do is help people. I just want to help people understand what I'm going through so they can potentially help themselves a little bit better. Now, I don't want anybody to follow exactly what I'm doing because what I'm doing might be completely different from what you need to do for your particular body type and your general makeup. But the number one thing that got me started in all this in the first place is I was fed up. If you're not fed up, you're not going to do anything. You're going to start this or that. And you're going to fall right back off get fed up and stick with being fed up because as soon as you're not fed up, boy, that bowl of ice cream is looking pretty good. And that right there, my friends, is the secret to my weight loss. Fasting, eating good health, staying in a calorie deficit, trying to move more, getting myself in a situation where I can move more. And five, being consistent. And I hope to see you in the next one.